Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. Um, this video is going to be a short, quick hitter. It's a back to basics. We did a video explaining how to do um, virtual IPs for translating an external address to an internal address one to one, meaning that <clears throat> whatever that external address was, it would directly translate any port that's trying to hit that address to the internal address of your choice. Um, now, with that being said, it's seldom the case where you just have tons of external IPs or whatever and you're able to just do one-to-one -one. so there's situations where you end up having to use the same external IP for different ports things like that so this video is going to actually drill down into how to do that with uh, the port forwarding aspect so if you only have 1.1.1.1 and you wanted to let server A have you know HTTPS driven web servers off of it you just forward 443 to that particular device whereas you know maybe you have something that you need to SSH to so you forward 22 to to the other internal address even though it's still using the same exact external IP so we're gonna dive in and get rolling Let's see here so this is my lab FortiGate it's currently running 620 it's a uh, Forti Wi-Fi 61E um, but it's pretty much the same across the board. So policies and objects, virtual IPs. Now there's two things that you can create in the virtual IP section. One is the actual virtual IP and then two is the virtual IP group. Just like address objects and address groups, it applies the same way. So let's say this is the external address of the FortiGay right here of my internal lab unit. If I wanted to create a virtual IP that port forwarded let's say port 22443 that's what we would do is this. So let's say this is a port forward for this particular address and it's 10.100.100.20 this is on our WAN interface and we wanted to map it to this is just a a make-believe number I don't actually have this network alive here but we wanted the forward 22443 let's say we're using 443 for a web server and we need to be able to administer some device that's behind this particular FortiGate well I can make it to where I can use this IP colon 22443 and map that down to 443 on whatever internal device it is and that's your that's basically your um, virtual IP for what you need so when you do a one-to-one -one, you don't see the parentheses here you only see that oh this IP maps to this IP and that's fine but since we're doing port forwards you have to look at things like this so um, you are able to do ranges uh, these little help guides actually do show you so you could do dash 22 or whatever if you had those available and you can do the same thing on your actual ports you are able to color code these it helps if you're trying to do something to where you know I'm visual I like to be able to see stuff so it helps makes it like that and then from there you just go to your policy and you say let me delete all these real quick these are all dummy policies from previous things so if I wanted to allow that to come out I try to keep my names somewhat explanatory outside the inside sources all I don't want to lock that down and then my virtual IP Two two four four three forward, and you can just leave this as all as well. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to do any inspection on this, but um, if this is a true WAN facing interface and you wanted to lock things down the way you should, obviously you'll use application control the way you always do. And this is my policy. Now, what this does is it says anything trying to go to this port forward allow it outside in. And the only way they can hit this is if they try to go to 10.100.100.20 colon. 22443. So for them to hit it, 
they would have to go to this address. Now there's not a web server actually behind that firewall right now, so this will never load, but you can at least um, get an idea of what it should look like, right? So, and that's how that works. You can do this across the board. Let's say you had a whole bunch of web servers or servers that provide various functions to a central application. You can create port forwards for all of them, uh, as long as they're using different ports group them together with a virtual IP group and then keep your policy relatively clean which is the way we all like to roll with it so but yeah um, virtual IPs are fairly simple they're always used well they're always referenced for the most part as outside traffic coming in for like a web server or something like that but just because it's a virtual IP doesn't mean that you have to do that you can do that for you can use a VIP for destination net um, you know, like with IPsec tunnels, and it gives you a wide range of functionality. So, and we'll actually get in the destination net with a more in detail video because it can get a little tricky, especially on IPsec tunnels. So, but if you have any questions, give them uh, post in the comments below. I'll try to answer them however I can. Otherwise, you guys have a um, a wonderful day, and let me know if you need anything.